Michelle Rose Turnbull's metamorphosis has come later in life. As a child, she knew she wanted to be a girl. But it was only this year, at the age of 80, she wore a dress for the first time in public. I can walk out of that door there and I'm, I'm as proud as punch. One doesn't need to search far through the archives to see why. For most of her life, homosexual acts between consenting adults could be punished with seven years jail. In 1988, a Gold Coast couple was convicted for having sex in their own home. Bill Potts was their lawyer. They were a loving couple in a committed relationship, standing in the dock, holding hands and crying. As president of the Queensland AIDS Council, Bill Rutkin argued for change, having endured his own run-ins with police. When they worked out that we were both gay men and probably about to commit an offence, they just gave us a good thumping and told us to go and see a psychiatrist. Why not suggest to these people that he says when Sir Joe Bielke peterson was Premier, some officers employed entrapment methods, which police denied using at the time. Some attractive young constable would, in plain clothes, would go into the toilets and wherever and... Um, expose himself and then if anyone responded to that invitation they would be grabbed. It was a hotbed of homophobia that kept North Queensland born photographer and artist William Young in the closet until he moved to Sydney. If there are a lot of gay people then it's somehow easier because you there's strength in numbers. Despite Conservatives' warning of a gay flood, Labor took power and in 1991 repealed the archaic laws. But transgender Queenslanders would have to wait a decade to change their name. And until 2003, a cafe could legally turn away a transgender person, but not someone with a guide dog. The guide dog had more rights than a transgender up until March the 31st. Since transitioning in the 1990s, Gina Mather has grown a thick skin. People throw eggs at you, they throw water at you, they jeer you, they imposter and all this. That fueled her determination as she lobbied politicians and advocated for trans women in discrimination cases. In 2007, she took on Qantas, representing a passenger. They would go around when they, would you, what would you like, sir? And all that. She says the airline settled outside court. The 83-year-old says few transgender people make it to her age due to medical problems and high suicide rates. I'm not saying I'm hard-headed, but I try, otherwise I wouldn't be here today. As attitudes change, more queer people are living openly, like Gabrielle Raya. She says the win for marriage equality in 2017 changed her life. When the yes vote happened, I felt empowered to come out to my family because of it because they're religious. The 36-year-old works Bible verses into her glittered art. I always say, if we are made in God's image, then she's a little bit camp too. <laughs> she moved from Victoria to Queensland early in the pandemic. There was an, a mentality that Queensland's backwards, you know, but then when you're actually here, it's not. The 2021 census found nearly 15,000 same-sex couples lived together in Queensland, a jump of 77% from 2016. The Sunshine State recorded Australia's second highest growth after Tasmania. We shouldn't forget that before um, those so-called watershed moments, people found ways to live um, happy and successful and content lives. Historian Yorick Smile says Queensland's queer history stretches back to colonial times. The state's first premier, Robert Herbert, and his school friend John Bramston owned and lived on a farm together. They called it Hurston, a blending of their surnames and now the name of a Brisbane suburb. A couple who remained lifelong friends. Queensland's first female doctor, Lillian Cooper, lived and worked with Josephine Bedford for decades. They're buried together at the Tawong Cemetery. Individuals who didn't marry, who found companionship and meaning with members of the same sex. Despite progress, the queer community still battles discrimination. There are still quite large areas, I'm sure, where there's quite a lot of prejudice in Australia. It's just as hard for young people to come out as it was for us. And though it's not always rainbows, Ms Turnbull says it's worth it. Be yourself and enjoy it. Alexander Lewis, ABC News, Brisbane.